All right, so now I have a river and I have some reeds. It's starting to look good, but how do I cross this mighty river? My characters do not know how to swim. Hmm. <laughs> I know. Let's make a mossy stone bridge. <laughs> Hey guys and gals, my name is Leif. Welcome to my YouTube channel called Devs and Dice. Today I'm going to show you how I went about to create this old mossy stone bridge for my tabletop. So without further ado, let's get into the build. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is whip out the old Proxon hot wire foam cutter. Now, I wanted to basically cut a large piece of XPS foam according to the plans that I had created. And these were very simple plans that I created in Adobe Illustrator. I have actually shared these plans and like I said, they're super simple. But really what I was after was a simple sort of design that I then could, you know, improvise and just build upon. And I wanted to have uh, a bridge that could fit a model uh, of normal size underneath the opening of the bridge and I wanted the slopes to be actual gameplay surfaces. A lot of bridges I've seen uh, built by people have too steep sort of uh, angles and what I ended up doing was to have essentially 20 degree angle. That felt somewhat realistic while also serving you know miniatures miniatures won't tip over unless they're very front heavy and you know going downhill so to speak but as i can see i am cutting uh, this rough shape with my proxon and once i have that i'm going to use my circle jig uh, from shiftinglands.com uh, i have not been sent this i bought this honestly so to speak and I'm just going to open up that sort of opening underneath so that a uh, character can fit underneath that. Now, I have a um, crap ton of different bricks, but I also needed some more bricks. So here I'm just milling up quickly bricks of different thicknesses. I really didn't go for any set dimensions here, to be honest. I honestly wanted this to be quite chaotic and feel like this has been you know, through a couple of builds and it's not, you know, it's not an elven bridge, it's a human bridge. Someone has, you know, created this very roughly. Here is my box where I have shaken the shit out of this in order to get all of those nice uh, stone textures. Now, this I honestly didn't plan, but to me it just felt like a good idea to have two sort of stable columns at uh, sort of... Um, I guess flanking the sides of the actual opening uh, and that turned out pretty good. It felt very natural as if this would probably be what someone would do, you know, um, starting with. Now once I had those in, I'm actually slicing some of these bricks into two and I'm using the sort of cut piece uh, to glue that onto the structure. And also, uh, I am actually using white glue here, uh, which I a little bit regretted. Well, I don't regret it now, because let me put it this way. It's stuck there pretty good, but I had to wait quite a long time for this, uh, this white glue to dry. And the white glue specifically is uh, foam tack glue from Woodland Scenics that is specifically made for uh, foam. So it does really, you know, grab hold uh, quite well, but it takes a while for it to dry. Which, of course, meant that, you know, the build got a little bit segmented over many, many evenings. And honestly, I am not really planning anything here. I am literally just, you know, um, I'm going by sort of instinct and sort of what I've seen on, you know, other brick builds, you know, doing them in every other pattern. Um, and it worked out pretty nice. I mean, it really gives that nice feeling of a ramshackle sort of uh, not fully professionally built bridge. Uh, and yeah, I, I like this style with separate bricks. It really gives the piece a whole lot more character.
Now the same thing for the actual uh, walkways. I was debating whether or not I wanted to do a separate brick pattern uh, or stone pattern. I shouldn't call these brick patterns, even though it is a brick pattern, but they're meant to be like larger stones. But I continued with this pattern, and you can see actually that there are some, you know, some uh, um, stones, bricks that are, uh, you know, more extruding, and some that are more flat. And I really liked that organic feel to this bridge. So this probably took me, you know, I don't know, a couple of evenings, but it doesn't take that long. I mean, it looks like uh, a heck of a lot of work, but in all honesty, this was kind of therapeutic and, and nice to, you know, lay one brick at a time or one stone at a time. And, and you know, the result, I think, speaks for itself. So this is what it looks like with most of the stones in place. As you can see, I haven't really done anything with the face of the openings. The first thing I wanted to tackle, though, was these sort of pillars. I actually wanted to continue these up onto the bridge. You can see I've cut a little bit of a groove on one of the stones there just to make them fit. Now, the plan I had was to sort of continue these, um, these pillars up to create sort of... Uh, you know, railings and whatnot, but first I needed to actually cut off the sides there just so that they weren't in the way. And here I've created some very bespoke pieces that has a little bit of an angle at the at the bottom. And I'm gluing these into the actual sort of foot of the bridge and then to the next brick. And once I have those in place, I can simply just, you know, uh, alternate uh, brick patterns going, you know, sideways and then horizontal and vertical, essentially. And after, I think, three of those, I was happy uh, with what felt like a good height for my pillars. Now, in order to just sort of, uh, I guess, uh, make a nice top, I just cut out some XPS foam and I rolled some uh, aluminium foil. You've seen this guaranteed in other, you know, YouTube channels. Just getting some stone pattern on there. And then I just top it off with that little, well, lid, can we call it that? Lid? That little hat, so to speak. Makes it look actually quite nice. And once everything was in place, yeah, let's move the little uh, figure out there. I just added, you know, my wet palette and then some uh, some of that glue on top just to sort of weigh it down and let it really set. Here I'm just uh, cutting out some uh, bricks of uh, appropriate size. Now what I'm going to do with these bricks, you can see how I've cut it in an angle there. I'm going to actually continue uh, making sort of you know, railings, and for these railings, I want to create sort of, well, I don't want to call it like pillars, but small sort of stands that I can, uh, you know, uh, build bricks onto. You'll understand soon. Uh, I don't know what the correct answer is. I'm not a builder, <laughs> obviously, by profession, so hell do I know. But first off, I'm going to actually work on the facing of the hole, and I just used some of the, the bricks that I had just to create, you know, a nice facade for that. So here you can see I've actually glued in those pieces and some of them were a little bit tricky. So then I used a, you know, a, a needle just to sort of pin them in place. Once I had them in place somewhat, I started laying it brick by brick. And you can see now uh, what I'm going for. So here I'm just using these sort of um, columns or whatever you can call them the one with the pink xps foam as sort of you know railings or, or support for the railings i should say and it actually turned out pretty nice looking and it almost looks like <laughs> it almost looks like somebody would actually have done that an engineer might have actually done this in a, in the dark ages um uh, unlikely highly unlikely uh, they would have probably uh, complained a lot about who the hell designed this, but it worked out pretty nice for me, and I think it actually looks pretty awesome. So here you can also see it with a standard sort of 28mm figure, just how it looks. Now I left that to dry, and I also cut off a little piece of the top just to make it flush and nice, because I'm going to come back onto this railing 
And I actually just made uh, some nice sort of uh, top slates or whatever you want to call it of stone. Uh, and I'm just gluing them in. I, of course, pre-measured this a little bit, but I'm pretty much eyeballing uh, most of this build, to be honest. So the width, I don't know, make it so it looks good. Something like that, perhaps. And yeah. I had it had a little bit more pressure there, but eventually all of the things actually were in place and the bridge uh, was pretty much done. So I left it to dry at this point. And honestly, this was quite a proud moment for me. I was like, holy crap, it actually sort of looks like a bridge. And uh, there in the background, you can see my future uh, adventure party for uh, for these videos. Now, uh, I'm going to just coat everything once the glue had dried with some uh, Mod Podge and black paint. And really, I'm not after like full coverage here. I'm really more after the, the properties of the Mod Podge to seal this build and to strengthen it up a little bit more. And once I was done with that, I let that dry uh, completely. And as you will see now, uh, actually the Mod Podge or the black paint didn't cover all that well. So I went back in with just some black craft paint. And because I want the base to be pitch black, as, as black as I can get it. So here, just trying to be very thorough and, you know, cover everything with black. Because the worst thing that can happen is that you see that baby blue or baby purple pastel color shine through and uh, yeah so be uh, be very sort of thorough I would say here and rather do several coats and thin <laughs> thin your paints people now but it, it keep it flowing because that also helps to reach all of the nooks and crannies at this point I started feeling at you know you know what I want to speed things up so out comes the hair dryer and well yeah it dried up pretty nicely so the first color I'm gonna be using is just some craft paints uh, a dark gray and here I'm doing uh, what is called an overbrush so imagine a dry brush but you don't take uh, away nearly as much color so I'm being quite violent with this because all of the stones are going to be, you know, dark gray and it goes on pretty bright, but you'll see that it sort of dulls down after, you know, it, it dries. So be quite liberal with this, I would say. Uh, I would say somewhere around the range of 75% coverage. Now, in order to do some uh, off shift or some shifting some colors a little bit, you know, here and there, I came in with some Castle Grey from Army Painter just to sort of give it some other tones here and there. Because I felt like the the actual uh, the dark grey was a little bit too cold and uh, this Castle Grey was a little bit more warm. And once that had dried, I'm coming in with some light grey uh, and this I'm actually dry brushing more from top to bottom trying to sort of hit all of those uh, nice nicely defined sort of uh, shapes. One thing also, as usual, I'm going to take this a little bit to 11 because uh, in the next step, I'm going to come in with some uh, homemade black wash. And you can see I have this in my spritzer bottle. Last time I used it, I think it was when I did my forced scatter terrain, which you can have a uh, look at if you want to. And as you can see down there, I am actually uh, talking to my crafting BFF, Sean from RFD Hobby, an awesome YouTuber who uh, we continually help each other and sort of inspire each other, give each other feedback. So do me a favor and check out his channel in the description below. So once all of the, the wash had dried, it really looked quite nice. And here I'm coming in with some sort of sort of warm yellow or sorry, off-white I guess towards more yellow color and I'm doing this sort of just to give that little sort of sun-kissed uh, you know um, feeling to all of the rock and then this is a proper dry brush so very little paint on the actual brush and as you can see it looks a lot warmer now which I wanted it to look like
So uh, here I'm coming in with some military shade, a moss green or military green, I guess, uh, wash from Army Painter. And this I'm placing at the bottom rocks. Imagine anywhere where moss most likely would have, you know, started to grow. So I'm just doing some sort of color variation there because we're going to come in with uh, a nice uh, fan favorite, which is I'm just using some cheap uh quick setting white glue and as you can see i am filling about half of this container and then uh the other half i am filling with this uh this flock that i got uh i think it's Ceterdes or something uh this flock it's uh it's i'm not sure if it's noch or if i think it's not the company that does this flock and it's worked well for me in the past so i figured I'm going to do the same thing here. So basically, I mix these together and I just create a disgusting looking, uh, almost looks like spinach stew or something. But yeah, don't eat this. Uh, you might <laughs> grow moss in, in your, in your, on your inside. But I just use a, a coffee stir stick to um, pretty much just like spackle it where I think moss might have had a chance to grow. So what I'm thinking of is where can moisture gather? Where would we have the correct sort of combination of sunlight and moisture? And honestly, I, I'm probably going to get a little bit of flack for this, but I don't think you can go overboard with this. Or I mean, of course you can if the entire bridge becomes green. But to me, you can go pretty strong with this and you'll see that it actually complements the bridge quite nicely because the bridge is mostly gray now, right? And it gives that little nice dynamic. But it looks terrible at this point. But have faith, wait for it to dry, and you will see that it actually turns out quite nice. So, this is when it's somewhat dry. I didn't want to wait too much because, uh, yeah, you know, I don't want to keep you good folks waiting too long. So uh, at this point, I'm going to come in with some Army Painter Tufts. I'm using some lowland shrubs, some meadow flowers, wooden tufts and swamp tufts, all from Army Painter. And I'm going to be using their basing glue because I want to have a little bit more accuracy where I uh, put these tufts and here I really I'm going you know all in with this and here's another trick that uh, I've shown you before and I know also Sean the buddy I told you about he does it on his channel RFD Hobby you can cut these nice tufts into half that way you're gonna one be more economical but also it's gonna actually look kind of nice when they're placed flush towards a structure it's going to look like nature actually does look like they can find, you know, small holes in the, you know, concrete to just grow out of. And it just looks a lot better, I feel like. But here I'm just placing out all kinds of tufts everywhere. And here's a personal favorite. You can see that extruding rock there. Uh, I actually did a bad job with the dry brushing, but you know what? Leif always finds a way and so does life. So why not? place a couple of plants there it will make it just look more you know fantastic and it's like Bob Ross said there's no mistakes to sure there's just happy accidents and that was one clear-cut example of that now I really believe that you know having these small dashes of color here and there it gives you know this such a more I don't know, genuine feeling and, and just more interest in it. Uh, and I mean, even if you're playing Dungeons and Dragons or whatever, you don't know, your players might be, hey, I see those flowers. Can I, you know, pick them up and throw them in, in the face of my enemy or something? You know, people can get inspired and I love that. Now, here is some, I think it's dark green uh, flock that I used in a previous project when I did those... Uh, nice um, evergreen trees. I just, uh, you know, did the same procedure, added some of that quick setting glue, made it into a paste, and I'm just doing it here and there at the bottom of, uh, you know, the moss, just to sort of show that there are some, some variations.
And at this point, I think it's time to look at the final result. Alright folks, that's that. My goal with this build was really to create a bridge that could actually work well with minis, because I've seen a lot of builds out there where the bridge is, you know, sloping too much so the, the minis would slide off, and to me this meant that I needed to have the slopes at about 20 degree angle. So what did you think about the build? Please feel free to tell me in the comment section down below. And as always, if you like these videos, then please consider subscribing, liking, or sharing this with any friends that might find it interesting. All right, and I also want to take this opportunity to thank you folks out there for your continued support. As some of you might have alluded to, I have encountered some difficulties in my life lately, which has, you know, it has really affected my focus. I will, of course, continue making videos for as long as I can. The cadence might not be on a weekly schedule, but I will make videos as often as uh, I'm able to. But I again want to really uh, thank you all for all the warm and comforting comments I've gotten for the past weeks. It really gives a Viking some strength to get through the hardships of life. So again, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. And with that, I want to thank you so much for watching, and I wish you an awesome day. For me, I need to start editing my two next videos, and there is sort of a common theme, actually, even though they're wildly different, but it's about me helping some friends out. All right, guys, so stay safe, and I will see you in the next video. Lots of love.